Let's talk about spoons. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I'm drinking a Fay tea that I actually got out of my um, Pi Priestess box this month. So I'm drinking it in my Uncle Iroh teapot. I'm very excited to talk about today's um, subject matter. We're going to talk about spoons because so many of you guys have requested that I talk about how I manage my spoons, i.e. energy. Okay. I found out something really exciting about spoon theory today and I'm very excited to share it with you guys. So spoon theory is a way of describing the experience of chronic illness according to Wikipedia and its limitations using a metaphor. It was created by Christine Misurandino, Misurandino? I don't know, who has lupus, an invisible illness which causes chronic fatigue, uh, chronic pain and many other symptoms that limit her energy levels and ability to do everyday things. I did not know this spoon theory that I've been using for years since I read it on Tumblr was created by a woman with lupus, which is the illness that I ended up getting diagnosed with this year in May. Um, my doctors are very confident it's lupus. And so we are operating within that reality. And I, even though I use spoon theory mostly related to my mental health, it's become so much more helpful, I think now with this new chronic illness. So let's jump into it. So the reason I'm very excited about this is obviously because it's been so helpful for me over the years and I'm stoked that you guys are interested in it. So spoons, right? The concept of like energy per spoon. It's this idea that you can sort of imagine and quantify how much energy you're going to have throughout the day. For me, brushing my teeth takes spoons, like literal energy. I have to get myself in the mood. It takes about like I'm going to say there's like a 15 minute ritual that goes into brushing my teeth. A lot of it is making sure that I can handle it. I have such a sensitivity to the smell of toothpaste that I'm very sensitive. So I use all these different toothpastes, all these like organic brands, all these like non-fluoride and then some with fluoride brands. Like I'm very experimental because I want to brush my teeth. I want to have good oral hygiene, but it it freaks me out. I think it's a texture thing. I freak out when I can taste and smell certain things. And so it's hard for me to want to brush my teeth, even though I want to brush my teeth. Because again, who wants to make out with a dirty mouth, right? So brushing our teeth is really lovely. It just, for me, takes spoons. So when I think about my spoons, I think about them in numbers that are comfortable to me. So you know how I talk about the core parts of a person and how I think there are like eight parts? It's an, it's an arbitrary number, it doesn't mean anything. I just kind of like the number eight. I feel the same way with my spoons, only I use the number 20. I think 20 is a really good, like, gauge for me on a spectrum to say, okay, Brittany, you have like 20 spoons. Or you can do percentages if you want. That also helps. Sometimes I do that as well. But like today, I brushed my teeth and it just took like one spoon. Didn't take too much energy, took a little bit. Um, I had to do preparation to go vote. So today, it's Tuesday, I went and voted and that took some energy, but I had my ballot already filled out. So when I showed up, I could just hand it over and that saved me spoons. If I would have had to wait in line, if I would have had to socialize, if I would have had to, oh my gosh, that would have taken a few more spoons. So in my head today, I feel pretty good right now. I check in with my body. I know that I took a spoon while I was definitely brushing my teeth. I took a couple spoons getting out of the house today. Um, and I did another shopping spree where I had to go get milk. So I'm going to say I'm like four spoons down already. I'm filming this podcast, which in some ways gives me spoons, but also takes my spoons. So by the end of it, I kind of either come out even or I come out with more spoons. Since I'm in a pretty good mood right now, I got some really good news this morning. So I'm very excited. Because I'm in such a good mood, I think I would say that I'm up spoons and I probably won't lose any doing this podcast, but I think I might lose some while I edit it later tonight. As you guys know, Len is my editor, but it it actually costs me spoons as like an artist energy. I get anxiety and I overthink the idea of Len editing my podcast because I want my podcast to be a very specific energy. And since Len doesn't live in my head, he can't actually mimic that energy. So I let Len, you know, do clips and I pay him for, to do those things, which is so helpful because Len coming into my life gave me spoons because I could now use more free time to do calls, which made me money, which helped me pay my bills, which all of this, right, is like spoons that come in and out of my life, not just even my day, but even throughout my day, I see an impact. So I started off with like 20 spoons today. I lost four going out and voting and doing all that stuff. And then I had to upload a clip today from my stream with Irrelevant, where I talked about spoon theory, which inspired this podcast today. Um, and 
that didn't actually take any of my spoons. It was really easy. I was cooking breakfast while I did it. Cooking breakfast today didn't wear me out. Getting coffee didn't wear me out. I was feeling pretty good about everything I've done today. I think because I got such good news today too, I feel like I've been, like I feel very, very like, whoa, you know, I'm so high on life today that my spoons will probably stay pretty good until about, I'm going to guesstimate after my last call tonight, which is pretty late for me. I'm going to say that that call after it, I'm probably going to crash. So what I have to do is I have to preemptively think, okay, Brittany, so we've already, we're already down four spoons. We got about 14, 16 left. (laughs) Let's think about how we want to use those 16 spoons. Okay. So we're going to lose at least five or six editing, maybe up to 10. So keep at least 10 ish in a secured, you know, area. So that leaves me with six spoons for the day so I can make sure I can edit my podcast. So, okay, six spoons. How do I use these six spoons? Well, I definitely need to use at least two spoons for my calls. You know, I want to, I want to say that some of my calls give me spoons, some take spoons. It's not the person, it's the energy that goes into the call. So sometimes if people have calls um, that are more emotionally heavy, that might make me, make me lose a call. Sometimes if we're bonding and really vibing, that might give me a spoon. But it it's not a bad sign if my calls take away my energy. My mom takes away my energy, my brothers take my energy. So it's not bad. Losing a spoon isn't bad. It's just acknowledging that if I use all my spoons up, I'm not going to be able to do other things. You know what I mean? So example, I know I have to vacuum today, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I think by the time I get through my calls, my editing and making dinner, I think that's pretty much going to use up all my spoons and I probably won't be able to vacuum. So I can do one of two things. I can beat up myself for not having enough energy to vacuum, which is so simple. Or I can accept the fact and preemptively give myself – um a buffer in patience to tell myself, okay, Brittany, even though you want to vacuum, by the end of this day, you probably won't have the spoons. Oh, and I just remembered I have laundry in the dryer, which exhausts me. So now we're going to use at least one spoon to put away laundry, probably up to three, which means we're really out of spoons at this point. So maybe I don't fold my laundry today. Maybe I save it for tomorrow because I don't think I'll have enough spoons to fold it today. I know folding laundry seems like the easiest thing in the world, like brushing your teeth. For Brittany, exhausting. Right now, currently, my left wrist is aching. It's just throbbing, like it's like screaming at me to stop moving my hands. But because this is how I talk, I just have to accept that like my body is sort of constantly mad at me, right? Spoons, it, spoon theory isn't like this magical thing. It's a tool, just like books is, just like YouTube videos are, documentaries are. Spoon theory is a tool. You can quantify your energy throughout the day. And for me, it's super, super helpful. Now, already I'm thinking, okay, if I use up all my spoons today and I try to give myself a spoon or two on the way to bed, because even going to bed is like a spoon routine because I have to brush my teeth, I have to floss, I have to wash my face, I have to shower. I do all these things that take spoons. Now, showering usually gives me a spoon or two. So my goal is even if I come out with like, exactly 20 spoons used today, which I probably will. Um, I will be very exhausted at the end of the day, but I'll take my shower and get just a spoon back enough to go to sleep feeling um, truly like joyous and not just like tired. I don't like to go to sleep tired. I prefer to go to sleep in like a good headspace. So I usually message my partner. I usually tell him how my day went because we're on different time zones. It's nice. So when he's sleeping, I can write him letters. And when I'm sleeping, he can write me letters. So I will write him a letter tonight and, you know, just tell him how my day went. And then I will probably, I really shouldn't always go on social media, but I probably will because I want to see how the voting stuff is turning out today. I'm just so curious. So I'll probably read that and I'll just let it, you know, I'll accept it for it is what it is. Now, if I feel like looking at politics is going to drain more of my spoons before bed, I just won't do it. But I don't know that yet because future Brittany, like six, seven, ten hours from now, she she might have the spoons to watch the news Brittany right now in front of you is mostly focused on this podcast. I think if I tried to worry about the voting stuff now, I would deplete my spoons faster and I wouldn't be able to edit. I know that sounds insane, but when I'm focusing on one thing, it can exhaust me, like overstimulate me. So I don't end up like I, I can't do too many overstimulating things in a day. So I'm already thinking, okay. If my last call ends at um, around like 7 p.m. my time, that's pretty late. Okay, so I can have dinner after. Let's say dinner's done at 8. Okay, and then let's say my brother wants to watch some anime, so I'm in bed by 
9, 9 to 10, I'm doing my stuff, writing my partner his letter, doing that stuff, brushing my teeth, taking a shower, getting it done. So by like, I'm going to say realistically about 10 p.m. should be lights out. Okay, let's say 10 p.m. is lights out. Then I'm up again um, anywhere from 6 to 8, depending on um, how much sleep I need. So with lupus, you end up needing a lot more sleep. And sleep takes my spoons as well as as gives gives it to me. So I have to think, this is so much thinking. I have to think to myself, okay, Brittany, you're out of spoons, you're going to bed, you have one spoon to sleep. You have to have enough spoons to stay in bed. Sometimes when I'm out of energy, I can't sleep because I've overworked my body and stressed it out. And so even sleeping can take spoons, which sounds outrageous because sleeping recharges your spoons. Sleep is truly the answer to everything. I just watched a video where Cody Ko was talking about that. And I feel the same way, like every time I think I'm in pain, if I had just slept long enough, I'd be in less of it. But sometimes your body doesn't want to. Like today, I really wanted to sleep more and my body decided we were up. It wasn't gonna sleep more and it, you know, it appreciated my desire, but did not, you know, did not work with me to fall back asleep. So I woke up and I did all my stuff in the morning and that was great, really smooth morning. Um, But sleep is like a complicated thing when you're in pain which is probably why I'm baked every night when I go to bed. But as you guys know, when you use weed every day, the effects do dissipate. Like there's not as strong of a feeling. So hopefully I'll take a month long break soon. I actually am due for one. I wonder if I should start it since when I travel internationally, I'm not gonna be high because it's illegal. Maybe this is a good time to make, oh, see, okay. So now I'm thinking, okay, Brittany, let's think about your spoons for the next month. Because if I start if I go out of town and I start the 22nd to the 22nd I could do that I could do a month of no weed how would I sleep during those nights so then I'd have to think okay you're not going to be high for those nights to sleep which means you would have to maybe exhaust yourself in a different way or or rest your body maybe meditate okay we can meditate before bed usually that's what I do to replace the weed let's meditate before bed get into a really happy space that should give me spoons, but it might take some spoons because weed is a faster mechanism. Okay, so I'm not even just thinking about my spoon energy for the day. I'm thinking about it for the month, the year. Ooh, when people ask me to go out, whew, it's like, okay, well, I have the spoons for that. Now, in the past, when I didn't know my own spoon energy, okay, I was a hot mess, canceling on people, being flaky. And I was asking myself, like, you've never been this person. Why are you so flaky on people now? What happened? At the time, I thought maybe it's like Seattle freeze or social pressure from being in Seattle for so long. But it ended up really being mental health and a lack of spoons. So when I discovered spoon theory on Tumblr way back in the day, it made me realize like I could start paying attention to how I felt during the day. But because energy isn't as easily understood on the surface it's really it's really not just energy right it's your well it is energy it's you like you're you're asking yourself what makes up Brittany and the consciousness and the energy that fuels that and motivates that consciousness that Brittany so I give myself the number 20 not because I literally have 20 spoons of energy but because there's I I just need a number to work off of and you should vary you know change this and do variations based off of your desires and needs So what I do is I sit with myself and I say, okay, let's make a list. This is what I did in the beginning when I learned spoon theory. I was like, let's make a list of all the things that I hate doing during the day that I prefer not to do. Putting away clean laundry, putting away clean dishes, brushing my teeth. Those are the three chores that I really should do on a daily basis. And yes, brushing my teeth is a chore that sometimes I don't always do. I don't always do my laundry. I don't always do my dishes. And yes, sometimes on a rare occasion, I even skip brushing my teeth. It's pretty rare. Usually I brush my teeth because I personally hate a dirty mouth. But on occasion, sometimes I just I'm gagging too hard or like I'm vomiting. Sorry, TMI. But brushing my teeth can make me vomit. And I've been pretty good about it. I haven't puked in over three years, four years, three, four years, four years probably. But I remember I was dating a girl who kind of like, I hate, I can't watch people brush their teeth. Like it, it evokes something in me that grosses me out. So I don't like what, ugh, oof, I'm thinking about it. Sorry. Woo. I'm thinking about it. Reset. Mm. I got to reset my brain. (sighs) Okay. I was dating this girl and, um, she made sort of a an effort to 
brush her teeth quieter. So if she ever moved in with me, if we ever dated long term, she would be like a good partner. And I always thought that was really sweet. Um, but yeah, like something about it really grosses me out. So you know those people who like in their bathrooms, there's like toothpaste on the sink. If I even smell toothpaste in the air, it like makes me want to gag. And so like I have sometimes it's just too hard. And instead of beating myself up, I just have to say, you know what, girl, this is just something you need to work on in the long term. You need to have conversations with yourself every day and check in. How is your body feeling? How's your mental health? Where are you at financially? Finances are such a huge part of my mental health. Obviously, like everyone's is. When you, you're you not sure if you're going to pay a bill or not, the anxiety from that causes so much stress. So in my 20s, when I didn't have spoon theory, when I was struggling so bad making seven bucks an hour, when I was working three jobs and just trying to keep myself afloat, when I was busy crying in the freezers at Kroger because I couldn't fucking manage, right? My spoons were in the negatives and I didn't even know. I didn't know my spoons were not even in it. They weren't even accessible to me. I had no energy left I just kept pushing myself and pushing myself and pushing myself which is why I've been suicidal for so much of my life not literally but tiredness and stress yes contribute to your mental health they say there are studies that have been done that people who do not get enough sleep see people uglier if they are sleep deprived can you imagine how you're going like I don't know about you but like I get hangry I get sleep deprived angry. Like if my siblings like are talking to me and I haven't slept, I'll just start crying. I'll get angry. I'll get agitated. I don't have the energy to to even mitigate my feelings or emotions. So mental health is so a part of the physical health and the relationship we have with sleep. But I just didn't know that in my 20s. All I was thinking was stay up all night, work your jobs, party and drink and get high, whatever, whatever I was doing at the time. I just never respected my body enough to ask it how it was feeling and I think that is something I've learned not just because of lupus because that came later but because I read about spoon theory now in my head every time I talk about spoon theory I say the woman is a disabled activist and I'm realizing she's a lupus activist she's an invisible illness activist but like lupus and I can't believe that's what I have now so it's kind of like a surreal full loop of this thing that helped me so much through my BPD and my lack of spoon and energy also just perfectly matched up with how I'm feeling with this chronic illness now. So I think that's kind of beautiful. So when people ask me like, how, well, how do you know how many spoons you have? Or how do I, how do I um, implement spoon theory? What you're really asking is, it, it is, what you're really asking is, how do I have a relationship with myself? You have to start by asking yourself, how do you feel? So every morning, a billion times during the day, Okay, how do my shoulders feel? How does my body feel? How does my hair feel, like my scalp? How, how, how does my breathing feel? Do I feel like I'm struggling today? Do I feel a little bit better? These are all questions that sound really superficial, but if you slowly ask yourself the questions and then actually like listen for the answer, it is exhausting just checking in with yourself. So, you know, I have to use some spoons to do even that, but it's so helpful in the long run. What I'm thinking of when I think about my spoons or my energy is my investment in my future and in my present. How do I guarantee and not overpromise people and then break their hearts and their trust when I cancel? I hated being a flake. I just, I really hated it. So I, I not only do this for me, but I do it for my community around me. I want to be a good friend. I especially want to be a good partner. I want to be a great sister. I want to be a great daughter. But I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm fucking tired. I've lost all my spoons and now I'm getting triggered. Yes, when I do not honor my spoons, I get triggered. So one of the key reasons I think I haven't been borderline triggered and had a full episode or any kind of episode really since, you know, 2019 is for a few things. I think one, sleep two food, and three water. Those are the three things that I see physically that I need, need, capital N, need. So I have to drink my water. You guys know I love my thermos. I got it at a farmer's market and I just, I rely on it so heavily, so heavily. Because I can't count how much water I've had during the day um, with just like a cup or a mason jar, which is what I usually use for drinking water. So I try to give myself three of these a day. It's kind of what I need for my body weight and everything. And then, um, Maybe during other like more strenuous days, I might have more, but I love my water. I drink it all the time, okay? So water is very important. Food, if I don't eat, don't get my calories, I am lethargic, right? Pretty normal, pretty basic, pretty dull, right? And yet when I'm stressed, the first thing I deny myself is food. So here I am stressed. 
denying myself food, starving, feeling lethargic, and then I wonder why all my spoons are gone, right? So I have to force myself to eat sometimes, which my nutritionist said is especially normal with diet changes. And since I'm going through a big one right now, it's really hard for me to find um, not to, well, no, no, it's easy for me to find food to eat. It's really hard for me not to want to rebel against the rules she's put in place to keep me healthy. <sighs> Humans, gonna human. Okay, so the third thing is sleep, which we already covered. It's everything. So in conjunction with these, like if I do all three things, I'm usually pretty joyous. My spoons are up. I'm usually pretty good at communicating with myself and I seem to be a better community member. So spoon theory for me wasn't just helpful um, for physical health or chronic illness, it was so helpful for my mental health. I don't know if that was Christine, Christine, Christine's original um, like goal with Spoon Theory, but I'm gonna communicate, I guess, that it's kind of like with, okay, let me tell it like this. When I got diagnosed with borderline BPD, I told one of my friends and he said, um, I don't think you have borderline. I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter if I do or not because the DBT is working, the therapy is working. That's how I look at spoon theory. I don't know if Christine intended spoon theory to be used for mental health. I don't think it matters because it helps. So I cannot be more grateful to this woman. This person created a system, a way of thinking that worked so perfectly with my brain, just so perfectly. And hearing a relevant talk about it yesterday, like, oh, that's kind of nice, like to think about it like spoons. That is so helpful. My nutritionist, she's so cute. I introduced spoon theory to her. And she calls it the golden spoon. She goes, okay, Brittany, you have regular spoons. We're going to get you to have golden spoons. I was like, oh, so she even worked off of and built off of the spoon theory. And now we're using language in our, in our calls together where she encourages me by going, we're going to get that golden spoon today. And I'm like the golden spoon and the golden spoon represents, at least with my dietitian, right? Like gut health, physical health, good diet habits, and like moderate exercise, making sure we're doing and hitting all the points to reach that gold spoon energy right because all these things will give me energy so all of this to say I am excited so many of you like spoon theory I hope that it helps you I hope that I don't know what Christine is doing with her life but this woman has saved I'm sure many people but especially me I have a brain that I just need a formula if I don't have a goal it's very hard for me to feel motivated especially when I'm in so much pain and I think many people relate to that. So thank you to Christine and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and I will see you next week. Oh, and please, can you leave suggestions for podcast ideas in the comment sections down below? Because this was one that I wasn't even planning on doing, but since people mentioned it yesterday, I was like, I need to do this now. Also, the edible just hit. I needed weed today. <laughs> I did. I needed weed today because I don't have calls for another like six hours. So I'm getting high right now. I'm going to have my evening calls and then I'm going to zen out with more weed. You know what I'm saying? Good day. What a great day, guys. I'm so happy. I'm so, oh, I'm so happy. Today was a great fucking day. It was so good. Okay. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Um, One last thing before I go. I do want to say... Oh, wait, animals? <laughs> animals give me spoons. Having a companion like Indiana gives me spoons. Hummer mouse. Oh, she's so cute. <gasps> I love her so much. All right, bye, guys. In my head, in real life, while I'm dead, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I. I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then